Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Draw With T. So we're finally moving on from some of the zine stuff back into good old sketching, what this series was originally about. And uh, uh, following up on the um, page of sketches I did of Storm Screech, this is just me doing the digital portrait of her. So uh, the sketch actually took almost no time at all. I'd scheduled myself an hour for it, which I knew I wouldn't need, but you know, sometimes stuff happens and you just have to... Uh, you know, start something late. Um, this actually only took 13 minutes, I believe, and that was including a little bit of faffing about in the, at the start. So I was quite proud of that, quite proud of my ability to draw this character that at the start of this series was kind of hard. Uh, maybe not as hard as just before the series, because just before the series, some of the sketches were really strange and really wonky, and I was really trying to nail down the character, but, um, you know, now, now this character is pretty all right to draw. Um, at least the face. Uh, Storm Screech's whole body still gives me quite a bit of trouble, and that's just because I haven't quite drawn um, as many pages as I have everything else, um, at least her face. Uh, but thankfully, this is just a portrait, so it goes pretty fast. I um, will be struggling a bit with the colors just because there are many shades of gray. One can make a gray griffin. Well, hippogriff, technically. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to reverse um, me calling uh, all hippogriffs and griffins just griffins. That's just damage done from an earlier version of Kalismir, the story that Storm Screech is from when they were all just called griffins. Kind of like how there's, you know, there's German Shepherds and there's Dachshunds, but they're all dogs. That's That was kind of the the vibe I was going for, and it might still be that vibe in the end, um, because I do believe that the story is going to develop a little bit of a difference between hippogriffs and griffins. What that difference is, I'm not entirely sure yet, but, uh, but it'll probably exist. But I don't know, I, I always just felt that Storm Screech should be a hippogriff. I, I never even considered that she might actually be a griffin, and I can't quite remember why. I think it's more to do with, um, in the past, I preferred to draw um, horse hooves as a, as a back end rather than, um, than animal paws. And I can't quite remember why, because it wasn't exactly like horses were easy to draw, but... Uh, it was a time of much sleep deprivation during my, my college years, so, uh, you know, there might just not be any logic there at all to begin with. So yeah, the, the sketch is now done, and we're going to be moving on to inking. Uh, once again, I apologize for the um, massive spinning around that you're probably going to experience. Once again, that's just because I use an Intuos... Um, a screenless tablet, I guess you could call it now, as opposed to uh, the new Fancy Dancy Cintiqs or the, the iPad Pros or whatever. It does make inking quite hard because I can't turn the page. I have to physically turn the screen, which is hard because you can't actually, you can't see the angle your hand's going to take. You just have to go by feel. And I've never been amazing at the feel of it. Although I do uh, think my inking these days has gotten a lot better since Adobe added the ability to have the hotkey, the hotkey for rotation. Uh, I remember there was a time where the hotkey would just pull up an, a box, and the box would ask you, "What do, what angle um, would you like to rotate your your artwork?" And you would, like any artist, would would be able to answer that. Like, well, what were, what are, were we expected to say? Oh, 45 degree angle today, please. Or, you know, I, 63 and a half is exactly what I need. It's exactly how my hand needs to draw these few curves. I, I don't know, but uh, you know what? Adobe has learned and grown. Um, I, I don't even know how it came to be that we all use this program for art, considering it's called Photoshop. <laughs> and you fix up photos in it and it's also the go-to for art and there's a program called illustrator that's used by graphic designers more often than illustrators because illustrators are using photoshop and oh my goodness I... <laughs> you have a program called after effects but people are making whole effects in it let alone, like not even after it, the whole animation just exists in After Effects. The naming, it seems like anything Adobe names its products, is it's doomed from the start to just not be that. Um, whether we chalk that up to like human 
human tenacity or just irony. I don't know what, but it's, it's kind of funny to think about. I'm surprised there's not uh, a, an Adobe product called Graphic Designer that is the like go-to app for something like abstract painters or performance artists or something. Something that's very opposite to graphic design. <laughs> So in the off chance that uh, you're a new viewer tuning in and you don't quite know why I'm drawing this, uh, I'm working on a series of basically uh, portraits of my original characters um, that are to do with the story they're all from, Kalismir. And uh, these are basically just quick little portraits of them that I'm going to be using for the uh, basically character documents that I, that I have for them. And uh, the idea there is it's going to be so much easier to find their character files and the information I need while I'm writing their story rather than just trying to find which name. And it gets really hard because for some reason I have a lot of characters with an A, so the, like their name starts with A. So, you know, you, th you think you found, you know, Illyria, but it's actually Annaline, and I don't know why I did that. Writer's woes, I suppose. Anyways, now we're moving on to color with Storm Screech, and here you'll see me kind of struggling a little bit. Um, I kind of decided from a very early point that um, Storm Screech was going to be a gray color. Um, there's a possibility in the future I might change that, because uh, lately her design has been taking on kind of the appearance that kind of reminds me of like a blue jay. and. You know, uh, with a lot of people mistaking her gray appearance for Buckbeak. I'm really, really tired by that, by the way. Um, I, I kind of feel like maybe I, maybe there's a need for a, a change in design. Um, I don't, maybe blue would actually be more appropriate, given that um, I don't know if at the time I really considered how her palette would match Tristan, and Tristan being her mount, you know, maybe it's, maybe her being a blue bird would work, because Tristan's color is blue, and even Tristan's color has been kind of getting a bit more, more like uh, sky color of late, so, uh, so we'll see with that. Um, going off on what I said earlier, though, uh, if, if you're watching this and you're a person that likes to go to artists and say, oh, your character looks like so-and-so, please don't. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's good to hear that um, in certain contexts, uh, especially like uh, if that person's trying to avoid, um, you know, any sort of uh, relations to characters. You know, maybe they're, they're working for a client and they, you know, they, they can't have a character that looks like Mickey Mouse, although I don't think that would really happen, that exact example would happen, but uh, th that's where it's useful, but um, there's a subsect of people that when they see anything, their fir the first words out of their mouth are, that reminds me of insert something here. Um, nobody likes that. No artists like that. We just don't. Like, imagine if you popped out a kid and somebody said, oh, that looks like Dirt Face's kid. You probably wouldn't appreciate that. You probably wouldn't appreciate if uh, everybody pointed out, oh, you have sneakers just like so-and-so. You know, you, oh, that shirt looks like so-and-so's. Um, what, what, are, what are we supposed to say to that anyways? Um, fill me in if you're somebody like that. Like, what is the point of that communication? Am I supposed to be flattered? Is it just, a, is it just like a random statement like the sky is blue? The weather is cold? I've never understood those points of conversation, to be honest. Uh, like, what's the point of having a conversation if if the topic you mention is one that I have nothing to add to? It's like, yes, the sky is blue. H how, th that doesn't feel like a conversation to me. Sorry, that was a, a bit of a random tangent. You can tell that uh, I don't quite like to hear how my characters are like other characters. A little bit is good, but when... Uh, when one person says it and then everybody else decides that they're gonna parrot that and all say it at once, I just don't understand why. I mean, it's one thing to mention it offhandedly, like, hey, did you know your character looks like so-and-so? That's good for me to know, um, but you know what? It, I, I mean, you think I would know that my Griffin character kind of accidentally looks like Buckbeak right now. Um, but whatever. I try not to let it bother me so much. Um, things like that only really bother me when it's 10, 12, 
14 or so messages in a single day and you know you spend the day kind of like no or you know like yes I know and no I, it isn't so and so um, and it's really annoying because sometimes I know the person has probably read the other comments uh, so why they feel the need to repeat that information I don't know I guess I should probably clarify I'm mostly talking about TikTok and my very young TikTok viewers, so uh, who can say what happens in the mind of a 12-year-old, but um, if you're somebody like that and you're watching this video, please, please stop. It's really not appreciated, and I'd say even in the art world for most people, it's kind of rude. Um, honestly, any point where you compare somebody's thing to something else, whether you mean it good or bad isn't is, is dicey it's very dicey um some people would love to hear that their um you know their game reminds you of undertale maybe that's their inspiration but if if they haven't said anything and you know maybe if you said hey your book's like harry potter they might not appreciate that especially if they're trying to not be harry potter um it's also a little annoying because uh I've had a weird comparisons to just stuff that doesn't make sense. Um, there are pe still people that say Kalismir is just Shrek. It it's Shrek. And they say that because there's a red dragon in it, there's comedy, and uh, there's a knight who rescues a princess from a tower. Um, they ignore the fact that uh, th there's no ogres, they ignore the fact that there's no swamp, um, that it's 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 pr it's it's got humor, but it's also kind of playing a little straight laced into the into the meme. They ignore the fact that you know there's literally all this other stuff happening, but uh, you know because there's that red dragon and and there's that knight knight rescuing a princess for a few seconds in the story. It's uh, it's Shrek. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, and I know this is the thing that bothers other people because I remember reading a comic recently uh, where a person, uh, or rather the author, um, had a character go to basically kind of like a fantasy college. It was a, fa a fast and loose story and the character accidentally <laughs> went to the wrong class so they wanted to go to world building class and instead they ended up in world breaker class and world breaker class was basically a class of uh, negative people and their whole thing was to break the the worlds of the world builder um, people and one of the, the the class rules was if anybody from world creator class uh, tells you about their world you must compare it to something else so they feel inadequate and unoriginal and it, that's kind of stuck with me because um that uh, that author of that comic was uh had a very very like basically summed up this whole topic very well in story form and i haven't seen that done and uh I don't know if people really do that, like comparing things maliciously. I do believe that a lot of people just not being artists themselves, that's their way of understanding things, is to compare everything they know to something they do know. And I think everybody is on some level like that. It's just that there are some people that can't understand things without it being very, like, attached to something else. Like, at, like there is, like, you know, that it has to be 100% attached, that there can't be an original thing. There's only Harry Potter, but with swords, um, you know, and then, uh, or like, it's like, I can imagine these people work when Game of Thrones was new. It's like, it's Lord of the Rings, but with, you know, with sex, uh, something like that. And even though there's a lot of nuances and differences, both like in the chassis and under the hood to them, that's the only way of understanding it at first. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was a really, really long tangent on, on that. And uh, yeah, you can tell what I've been experiencing a lot lately. Anyways, guys, we're, we're very near the end. Sorry to have ranted about, uh, about that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about these videos where I just kind of let myself talk about whatever. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoy this uh, artwork of Storm Screech. I very much love this. I very much love her updated look versus the old image of her in the bottom left corner. Have a good one, guys.